trucks in a D-rate and you don't understand your after treatment system. We're gonna be going over nine must know after treatment components that's gonna help you get out of a D-rate. So let's get started. My name is Jason Chice, CEO and founder of OTR Performance, where we help owner operators and small fleets be able to do their own diagnostics and take ownership back of doing their own repair. If you'd like to learn more, you can visit otrperformance.com for more information. The first after treatment component that we're gonna cover is called the DOC. The DOC stands for Diesel Oxidation Catalyst. The diesel oxidation catalyst converts carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons into carbon dioxide and water, aiding in the reduction of harmful emissions. This is positioned directly after the turbocharger. The temperature of the DOC filter ranges between 250 degrees and 750 degrees. If your DOC filter is not at a certain temperature, it's not gonna start that regeneration process because your engine control module that controls that regeneration process does not see the proper temperatures raised up high enough in order for it to start that regeneration process. The second after treatment component that we're gonna be discussing is called the DPF. The DPF is located right after the DOC filter, so this plays a critical role in the after treatment system. This captures the soot coming from the engine exhaust, significantly reducing particular matter emissions. This is obviously located downstream of the DOC and it traps the particulate matter until it's burned off during regeneration, which is managed by the ECM. The DPF system consists of the seventh injector, which also is called a hydrocarbon dozer, a diesel oxidation catalyst. Then when DPF is full, the system activates the HC dozer, which is also your seventh injector. This sprays diesel into your exhaust stream, which reacts with the DOC filter to generate heat. This heat traps soot into ash until the filter is completely cleaned. Over time, ash must be removed by cleaning the DPF filter. The DPF filter reaches temperatures up to 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. If your truck is not generating enough heat to start burning off that soot, you might have to look upstream because there might be an issue with your seventh injector or you might have an issue with your DOC filter not getting the temperature it needs for it to be burning off that soot. So this is where it's really important for you to know that that soot level is something you need to pay attention to, especially when you're driving a truck with an after treatment system. The third after treatment component is called the SCR. SCR stands for Selective Catalyst Reduction. This system reduces nitrogen oxide NOx emissions by injecting diesel exhaust fluid into the exhaust stream. The chemical reaction converts NOx into nitrogen and vapor water. The SCR catalyst is located right after the DPF filter and it really completes the entire after treatment system. The optimal SCR performance requires exhaust temperatures between 400 degrees and 850 degrees. DEF quality and dosing rates are critical. Poor DEF fluid could lead to crystallization and system blockages. If you have any SCR issues, it could really cause engine D rates and put you potentially in a five mile an hour DEF D rate where you obviously will have even more issues. So you wanna just understand the system a little bit more to really understand what component plays a key role into your complete after treatment system. The fourth after treatment component is called the DEF dosing unit. The DEF dosing unit precisely injects DEF into your exhaust system ahead of the SCR catalyst. This unit ensures the correct amount of DEF is used to optimize the reduction of NOx emissions. The DEF dosing unit is typically mounted near the SCR catalyst in the exhaust assembly. Proper maintenance of the DEF dosing units includes checking for crystallization and ensuring the DEF tank heater is operational to prevent freezing in cold climates. The DEF dosing unit plays a critical role into your entire after treatment system. If your DEF is having any type of issues, it could potentially cause crystallization at the DEF dosing unit inside your exhaust system. The fifth after treatment component 
is called the knock sensors. You have two knock sensors on your truck. You have an inlet knock sensors and you have an outlet knock sensor. The knock sensors monitor nitrous oxide levels inside your exhaust system. It provides real-time data to your ECM for regulating the DEF injection. These sensors are strategically placed before and after the SCR catalyst to measure the efficiency of the NOx reduction. If you have a sensor that is drifting because of contamination or whether the sensor is just failing, this can cause an, a sensor malfunction which is going to cause your truck to go into D-rate. The inlet and outlet knock sensors are also important to replace at the same time. Usually when you replace your inlet knock sensor, you also want to replace your outlet knock sensor. Should you replace your inlet and outlet knock sensors with aftermarket sensors if they fail? I strongly suggest that you go with OEM sensors. The reason why is because these sensors constantly fail if they're aftermarket. And so you want to make sure that you have good sensors on your truck and it's calculating all the emissions back to the engine computer. So you don't want to have issues with your knock sensors after you replace them. The sixth after treatment component that we are going to discuss is temperature sensors. There are multiple sensors, one before the DOC, one between the DOC and the DPF filter, and then one after the SCR system. These sensors provide critical information back to the engine control module to regulate your regeneration system. This is why it's important to know the exhaust temperatures so that way this informs that regeneration process of how hot it's getting at different points. The seventh after treatment component is called the DPF pressure sensor. This is located before and after the DPF. The DPF pressure sensor measures the pressure differential across the DPF to detect any blockages or restrictions. This information helps the ECM decide when to initiate a regeneration. If you have a DPF pressure sensor that's always reading high, that indicates that you have high soot buildup into your DPF filter. So your DPF sensor plays a critical role in measuring the soot level inside your DPF filter. Can you replace your DPF pressure sensor yourself? You could easily replace this sensor with some basic hand tools. You would just need a new sensor and you would disconnect that sensor from your exhaust after treatment system and replace it. Now once it's replaced, you want to go ahead and use a diagnostic tool to connect to the truck. You'd want to run a force DPF regen and you want to just look at all the temperatures and all the data to ensure that the DPF pressure sensor is reading correctly. Now once it runs through a DPF regen, it will go ahead and clear all of the associated fault codes along with it. The eighth after treatment component that we're going to be talking about is called the ECM. The ECM stands for engine control module. The engine control module regulates everything in regards to your after treatment system. This monitors your regen temperatures, this monitors your DEF dosage, this monitors how long your soot level is at before it puts you into a D-rate. If anything is going on with your after treatment components, it's reporting back information back to the engine control module to display fault codes that there's an issue with your truck. If you have an ECM that is failing, is this something that you can replace yourself? I don't recommend you replace your engine control module yourself. The engine control module is specifically programmed for each and every engine, and it's also programmed for your horsepower. If you're trying to replace your ECM yourself, you may experience that the truck needs to be programmed in order for it to be working properly. It's important for you to take your truck into the dealership if you experience any failed ECM. The ninth component that we're going to be talking about is called the EGR valve. The EGR valve recirculates a portion of the exhaust gases back into the engine to lower the combustion temperatures and reduce NOx emissions further. So if you have a failed EGR valve, if it's stuck open, it's going to put a lot of NOx emissions and it's going to really stress your DEF system because it's working harder. Now we just went over the nine must-know after treatment components. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. Thanks for watching.